Today we're going to be talking about uh, long distance trips and uh, how I pack up my gear when I'm going on a ride. Like we said, I'm getting ready to go on a trip into uh, the upper peninsula of Michigan. So if you guys are not familiar with us Michiganders, we use our hand as a map quite a bit. And if you uh, say you're from Michigan, you don't do this, you're full of shit. So I live up here in the pinky part of Michigan in a resort town called Traverse City. And uh, you got a picture of the upper peninsula, something like this. We are going all the way up here into the Keweenaw Peninsula to uh, Copper Harbor. It's a beautiful, beautiful area of the state. Uh, very well known for the copper mines and the iron ores and all that stuff. But um, along the trip, we're going to be staying in St. Ignace one night. So we're leaving Thursday evening after work. We're going to stay in St. Ignace overnight um, so we can get up bright and early, be above the bridge, uh, you know, Friday morning. And then we're going to take the north shore of the Upper Peninsula into Copper Harbor, um, stopping along into the Grand Marais, taking H-58, over to Munising, Munising to Marquette, Marquette to Houghton Hancock, Houghton Hancock up to Carver Harbor, uh, where we're going to be staying. We're actually staying in a little town called Mohawk, which is uh, where Mount Bohemia is located. And we're actually staying in the Mount Bohemia um, resort area. We got like a little resort cabin for, for a few nights. That's going to be home base for right now. But from there, we might end up going into Wisconsin and Minnesota. Who knows? There's really no plan, <laughs> which is what I love. So. Um, along the way, we are going to stop and hit up some of the some of the attractions. We might hit up some fishing spots. Who knows? But, uh, you know, it's just a, a time to get away and forget about things for a little bit. And we're celebrating Brother Mook's 60th birthday. So that's pretty cool. So we're uh, I'm pretty pumped about it. But I want to show you guys how I pack up my bike and how I get going. Um, early on in my YouTube thing, um, I've only been new on YouTube for about seven months now, but... I think video number three, which happens to be probably my most successful video, um, I did a video on long distance rides and what I do. And I went over my bike and how I do stuff, but I didn't really pack anything up. So I'm packed up now. I wanna show you guys how I do it. So as you know, I have a 2012 Ultra Limited. Um, I bought this bike with about 6,000 miles on it in 2022. And I have just over 30,000 on it now. Um, I absolutely love this bike. I didn't buy this bike to keep it. I bought it to flip it. Then I rode on it and said, an old grandpa's bike is right for me. This bike fits me perfectly. But let's start back here in the, in the rear. Okay, so this is a Harley Davidson bag that I have loaded up right now with um, two pillows, a sleeping bag, a sheet, a towel, wash rag, all that kind of stuff. Um, the cabin that we're staying at, we're calling home base. It does not come with any linens or bedding or nothing like that. So we had to provide our own. And then this bag here is my Harley Day Tripper bag. This has my clothes in it for the weekend, um, which is uh, pretty nice. I use this bag quite a bit, even going on uh, work trips. If I'm going overnight or for a couple of days, I'll take that bag with me. So we're back here again in the back with the uh, big Harley luggage bag that I got. I just wanted to kind of show you guys what it is. I did not pay for these. My father-in-law got these when he purchased his last motorcycle. He never used them. Um, they sat in his garage, and he uh, kindly bequeathed them to me. And this bag holds a lot of stuff. Like I said, I have an extra large um, sleeping bag in there. I have a sheet. I have a beach towel. And I have two full-size bed pillows in that thing. Um, and I still got room. So like in this bag tomorrow, I will set my my bathroom accessories, things like that. I'll end up putting some extra battery packs in there. You know, just that kind of stuff. It has this really nice rain fly that, that comes on. So um, I absolutely love this bag. It's well built. Um, this rain fly does an excellent job on keeping everything nice and dry. Something I want to kind of talk to you guys about are these rock straps. ROK straps. These things are badass, man. These, uh, this is a little bungee's portion here. And then you can get these, uh, this side in different lengths. These are, I think these are 36 inch right here, which are perfect for what I use them for. Um, I have, I believe six of these. I even have a couple of these in my work truck. So absolutely love these. 
I like the crisscross applesauce my uh my main bag here on top of the luggage rack but uh yeah now inside the tour pack here i don't have this quite loaded up i'll keep this pretty empty there probably won't be much more that goes in here other than a fan that i'm going to be bringing with me um, but i will take my my heavier leather coat as well as my vest there and um that might be about it that goes inside of this this luggage rack i like to save some room in case i buy any souvenirs or anything like that but uh yeah that's basically it for the trunk area now we'll move over to the uh saddlebags all right once the phone stops wobbling here we're going to talk about the low side saddlebag which i lovingly um call my garage so uh let's take a look at what i got down here so this guy here i usually keep next to a pair of uh good decent leather gloves this right here i have the uh stock harley shocks on this pig still i'm debating on whether i'm going to uh trade the old girl in here next year or not but um I do believe shocks are probably going to be in my future. But with that, I have the uh, the Harley Davidson pump that I like to keep uh, like to keep with it. Inside this is also my uh, my fuel pack uh, four, my tuner for the bike. I don't have to have the tuner plugged in all the time for the tuner to work, so you just plug it into the the data cord there, and it programs the ECM for you. But I do like keeping it on my bike just in case something goes haywire. Um, I also keep this is my this was my covid mask i keep it uh for a neck warmer just in case it does get a little chilly up there and i'm riding and then of course you know the the mighty tool bag so we got wrenches and sockets and electrical tape and tie wire and zip ties uh a tire repair kit to get me to the to the dealer if i need to and also i have uh I do believe i have oh yeah I have my uh, my rain gear in here too. So um, all that fits inside this little bag. It does a great job for me. So obviously this is the low side of the bike. You don't get into this as often. That's why I just throw all the stuff in here that I normally don't need to get into unless I absolutely have to. I do like keeping my gloves and my stuff right up on top just in case so, but uh, that's it for her. Now we're over here on the high side of the bike, and as everyone knows, this is typically the saddlebag that you're in and out of the very most. And so it makes sense to put the things in there that you're going to be getting, you know, that you're gonna to wanna to get to pretty quick. So uh, because I'm a curvy, voluptuous fellow, I have a sleep apnea machine, which uh, I keep, comes in a bag like this. And uh, that goes right in here. What I normally will do too is I have about a bedrillion um, microfiber towels laying around. I'll kind of line it around there with microfiber towels just to keep the vibration down. Never had any issues with it yet, but uh, yeah. So that goes in there. I will also run my a big water bottle up here. I don't like having a bunch of stuff up on my on my bars. I already have too much now, but. Um, that's basically it for that. I can reach back and open this up if I need to and get to what I what I gotta do. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, the also must-haves in my book when I'm going on a on a long trip. And uh, so just to get this very clear, I'm a firm believer in your right to choose when it comes to wearing a helmet. I live in Michigan. We are a right to choose state. We have um, you know we we fought the helmet law and we won. Uh, thanks to Abeta, Michigan, and we're still fighting that on top of uh, many, many other things that uh, us bikers here in Michigan get the shaft put to us. So um, I do choose to wear a helmet when I'm going on these longer trips, um, especially up in UP. This, uh, this thing keeps the bugs from hitting you in the face, which uh, absolutely sucks because we have mosquitoes the size of pterodactyls up there, and when, uh, the black flies are absolutely atrocious this time of year so um let's go over a couple things on that like i said we are a uh, right to choose state when it comes to the helmet law and uh thankfully i choose to wear mine when i want to and that's the end of the argument for me there we won't have any more discussion about it 
Um, I believe it's your personal right to do whatever you want to do. I don't care. It doesn't affect me. So, um, anyways, I have a Shoei Neotech 2, which I got back in uh, back over winter. Um, I love this uh, helmet. It's uh, you know it's not super heavy for being a modular helmet, and all the features on this thing. Um, I do want to get a different a different uh, visor for it, like a mirrored one, but I do have the uh, the pin lock system on here, which helps out. This thing is absolutely filthy now that I'm looking at it in the camera. But uh, I have the pin lock system, which is great. It's also a modular as as they are, but uh, I tend generally run with this up anyways. I do like having the wind hit my face. Um, I am on a motorcycle after all, I'm not driving in my truck. Um, as most of these types of helmets have, it, it does have an extra sun visor that pops down, which absolutely does a wonderful job. Um, I typically ride with my with my Oakleys on, my sunglasses anyways, but sometimes the sight, the sun is uh, a bit much and I'll, I'll double up. So um, we do also have the Senna communication system on here. Um, this is the, I don't know, like the, the lower model. It does a great job. Um, Brother Mook and I use these when we're communicating, especially around like even like bigger rides where we have a lot of people. Um, we use this on the uh, Some Gave All Memorial Weekend ride to communicate, and uh, it did great. So that's the uh, thing there. And you just kind of stick it in there and click it in. Pretty easy. So, yes, this uh, this system is, is pretty cool. Not only can you uh, communicate back and forth with another rider or more, um, you can use the phone if you need to. I, I really don't like doing that too much. And uh, you can listen to music, podcasts, whatever else. It's, uh, it's a good little benefit to, to being on the road with it. So, um, yeah, that's it for that part. I mentioned not liking having a bunch of stuff on my bars. Um, and I have a bunch of stuff in my bars. This is for um, my GoPro. When I'm not wearing my helmet, I'll throw it on here. This is what the farming biker um, lovingly refers to as the butt plug. Um, for reasons you can guess. And then, of course, I have my Ram mount, which I do like. Um, I heard a bunch of mixed reviews about it. I've never had any issues. I super glued these on. It holds really good. I typically have it over here, but now it's over there. But, yeah, I keep everything pretty clean up here. I don't even like having my phone mount up here, to be honest with you. That's the one thing I would like to do about maybe upgrading my bike to a newer model as I can... I can put my phone away inside my pocket or, or somewhere else and have all this clean. I don't like having a bunch of, uh, bunch of stuff up there, but that's just my personal preference. Let's talk a little bit about safety. So I run these Eagle Light Slimline lights on the front of my bike. It's not really doing a whole lot of justice now being middle of the afternoon, but uh, these things light up the road like nothing I've ever seen before, and I get a ton of compliments about them. I also am running the Eagle Lights turn signals, which uh, when those aren't blinking right around here, uh, they light up white as well. I have the hazards on just so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. But yeah, yeah I, I absolutely love these turn signals. I get a ton of compliments about those. The slimline lights, those are something that uh, kind of grow on you. I wasn't too sure about them when I got them, um, but I do enjoy them. And I like the fact that I can see everything. I have these uh, these lights tilted out just slightly so I can see shoulder to shoulder when going down the road at night. Which is very important up here in northern Michigan with all the deer and the bears. So um, definitely a good thing to have is uh, good lights. Now back here to the uh, derriere. We are running the same exact turn signals as we were up front, of course. Along with the Eagle Light LED uh, brake light, which is very bright. I've been going back and forth on wanting to upgrade these or not, but I really don't run my tour pack on my bike unless I'm going on a trip and I need the space. So uh, I can't really justify spending the money on that when I, I typically don't use it that well, that much. Now back up here to the bars. I run 14 inch Arlen Ness modular bars on my bike, which we talked about before. Um, I absolutely love these bars. These 
are able to loosen these up and you can turn this in to, to your comfort level. Um, and it only takes a quick second to do. And these things are extremely tough. I've had zero with issues with them at all. I, I absolutely love these bars. They are heavy duty, thick, and uh, very easy to install with these, uh, with this being able to come out running your wires. Everything is nice and smooth on that. Um, also another essential when you're going on long trips in my, in my book is having some highway pegs. Being able to put your feet in different positions is awesome. Um, I don't run, I don't have a passenger on the back of my bike. My wife refuses to ride. So I took my passenger pegs off. I don't like how they, how they look, the floorboard. So I take them off, but uh, sometimes I do put my feet back here as well. But with that, between my floorboards, the pegs, and even putting my feet up on top of the, uh, the lower fairing there, um, I can work out any, any issues I might be having at that time when, when going down the road. So not only is it important to be seen with all these lights, it's very important to be heard as well. Um, a lot of times if you read in the Michigan State Police um, reports that the drivers that hit a uh, motorcyclist often say they heard them before they saw them. And uh, that's something, you know. So um, I'm going to show you guys what I run on my pipes. So I run the Tad Performance 4.5 inch BAM sticks with the zombie baffles. And I absolutely love the sound of this bike. It is loud as hell. Um, I replaced this over this uh, past winter from the header all the way back. So this is a cat, a catless uh, header going into the four and a half with the zombies. And, and she screams, man. I, you can hear me coming from a mile away. So some people say it's annoyingly loud, but I don't give a fuck. So <laughs> I love how it sounds. And uh, in my opinion, I've been wanting tabs for a very long time. And uh, the price on them was, uh, was up there. But uh, I don't regret one thing about paying the money for these things. They sound amazing. And as I said, you can hear me coming from miles down the road. Another, you know, somewhat high dollar feature to my bike that was a must have for me was this uh, Saddleman Road Sofa Seat. This thing is an absolute game changer for me. Um, it extended my riding experience 100%. Um, I've talked about it before, like in the Saddleman review video I've done, that um, I suffer from a lower back, right hip injury that uh, prevents me from sitting comfortably in anything for an extended period of time. I actually find myself more comfortable <laughs> sitting on that seat than I do the lazy boy I own in my house. So um, I absolutely love it. Again, I mentioned this before, but uh, one thing old stupid Rob did was uh, I didn't want to have a, a backrest at the time. I didn't realize that Saddleman offers, it's a whole different seat with a backrest. They actually have the pocket in it and the ones without it don't. And I thought I could just, you know, buy the backrest down the road. You can't. So, um, but when I do that though, I have a little bit of a cheater. Well, I took the bag off, but... I'm going on these trips, that's why I put my clothes bag right there. This pushes in enough, and it's super comfortable. And it's probably a little bit better than what their um, saddle and backrest is anyways for me, because I can lean back more um, as with their backrest. It actually pushes you up just slightly. So I have the extended reach seat, which sets me uh, up a little bit and back about two inches. Uh, again, I'm 6'4", so I like to stretch out and, and ride. and that allows me to do it. Awesome seat. So that about does it for what I pack when I'm doing a uh, extended uh, trip. Uh, there's going to be a few days of me riding. Uh, this trip is going to, we're estimating about 1,600 miles in total by the time we're done cruising around what we're doing. Um, it might be a little bit more than that. Who knows? It all depends on what we, if we decide to do. I mean, we will be closer to Sturges. I mean, just saying. So, um, yeah. That's it. I do appreciate you guys uh, tuning in, though. Uh, remember to hit that subscribe button if you can. And uh, as always, man, ride with purpose. We'll see you next time. Later.